Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be building some guitar patch cables. Pretty useful skill in my opinion. It's uh, relatively inexpensive and you can make some pretty high quality stuff yourself and it's really not that hard to learn how to do. So I've got some Mogami 2319 patch cable here and I've got these GLS uh, pancake plugs. Links will be down in the description when I check them out. I got it off Amazon. It was all pretty inexpensive. I've got a whole bunch of cable here and I got a whole bunch of plugs. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in and start building some patch cables. All right, first things first, we're gonna open up these enclosures. Just take these little screws off. I like these pancake plugs because they work pretty well on the on the foot on the floor on the floorboard with your pedals on your pedal board, but they're also pretty easy to work with, pretty secure. So um, you can see we've got two tabs here. Now, just by visual inspection, you can see that this inner tab here is connected with this. Uh, shielded part, so that's going to be the part you're going to ground, and then this part here in the middle is going to be our tip connection that's coming off of here. Also, I like that you have little tabs you can actually solder the uh, wires into, rather than having to kind of friction fit or do anything else like that. I, this is kind of my preferred uh, way to actually solder into these little enclosures. You can get a nice mechanical fit from one to another. Alright, so first things first, I just went back to my board and I measured how long I want my cable to be. And so I'm just going to take a wire cutters and snip that. This is going to be um, a top mount jack to side mount jack. So if you imagine the output's coming out here from the top mount, it's going this way into a side mount jack. So we're going to put the, these two together like that. Now I take my wire stripper and I strip off the edge of this. You want to be a little careful when taking off the edge of this tubing here. You don't want to cut into this shielding here too badly. Now I'm just pulling out all the shield portion away from that inner. You can see there's there's another layer of black insulation there that's covering the inner hot wire. So we strip all that shielding away and we clump it together and then we twist it. You want to try to get every little strand. Alright, so far so good. Now we strip off the inner shield that exposes our tip. Twist that guy together, and now we are ready to wire this up. So again, my hot is going to go in here, and my ground is going to go in here. Now I'm going to solder the ground connection. I tried to get plenty of solder on there, specifically on this run here, to keep everything nice and tight. And I also tried to kind of position my wire in such a way that my hot wire is pretty much ready to go and I don't have to do a lot of fussing to get it into position. Onto the edge layer of the enclosure that will ground out my tip signal and cause it to not work. Well, if you could see there, but what I'm looking for is the moment it turns silver shiny. For a second there it was gray and that's not going to work.
All right, so now that I've got it all wired up, you can see uh, if I do a little test fit, putting the casing back on, there's a little bit of wiggle room in here, and I kind of want to fill up that space a little bit. I'm not real pleased with that. So you could use heat shrink tubing. I don't have any of that with me right now, so I'm going to MacGyver it a little bit and use some masking tape. Okay, so that should be pretty good. Now we're going to put our closure back on, and that should fit nice and snug. That pressure fit on the tape should keep things really nice. Okay, one down. Now again, this is going to be like this. We're going from a top mount to a side mount. And actually, I went and measured it again, and I'm slightly length too long, so I'm going to trim it down just a tiny bit more. In my experience, it's good to cut it just a little bit long. It's so you can always kind of go back and um, undo or cut out a little bit more, but you obviously can't. Once you cut, you can't go back and re-add it. So now taking off again this edging and I'm really that time I didn't even necessarily use the hole there I'm really just using this sharp part here to kind of gently score the edge and that gave me what I needed again collecting these ground shield wires and spinning them all together Next we expose the uh, tubing off of the inner hot wire and we round that guy up. Got our other edge, other pancake plug, remove screw number one, remove screw number two, and we're in. Now I'm just trying to get these positioned in there as best as I can. So now I've got it sticking through the hole there just a fraction. You don't need it to go in there too far because again if it goes too deep it'll contact the housing on the other side and that will short out the connection. We don't want that. I did get a little bit too much poking through there so we're going to trim it. Perfect. Looks good. Fill in this crack a little bit more. And we're good to go. So we'll put the housing back on. All right, there you go. There's a completed patch cable. Now, before I'm done, I like to check for continuity with my multimeter. So how I do that is I'll just start tip on one end.
Okay, so I've got my black wire here hooked up to the tip. If I connect this red wire to the tip, it should buzz. And then you can connect it to the shaft, it should not buzz. Also, there's no resistance to speak of. And then vice versa, if we connect this black wire to the shaft, we get a buzz there and no buzz on the tip. Good to go. This is a successful patch cable. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts down below. See you soon. Bye.